Hey, what up everybody? This is Steven Breach coming to you as we count down until uh, Monday Night Raw, tomorrow night, August 17th, 2015. This is your uh, Raw preview uh, coming to you tomorrow night. Uh, all the hype up is going to be about SummerSlam 2015. They still need to name us uh, a, a Sheamus versus Randy Orton match. Um, I, the, you might get some other matches named along the way, maybe something involving Rusev, Lana, Dolph Ziggler, Summer Rae, something with them. But Everything seems to be pointing at what it all comes down to tomorrow at Monday Night Raw is it all is going to be about Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. These guys have been separated uh, since their huge brawl they had the night after Battleground. Uh, at Battleground, basically, Undertaker showed up out of nowhere. Uh, no one was expecting this, and he caused Brock Lesnar to lose his shot at regaining the WWE Championship in his rematch against Seth Rollins. Undertaker was still pissed over losing his streak at WrestleMania 30. Um, since then, Undertaker has uh, sort of lost his powers, I guess you can say. He's still the Undertaker, but he's merely just a mortal man. I, I know they're using the buildup of the match that's too big for WrestleMania that it's being held at SummerSlam. But the whole basis of this match is around the WrestleMania streak is what does not make sense to me. Um, but basically, what steps and what precautions will be made uh, for Triple H uh, and the authority to make it where Undertaker and Brock Lesnar will not brawl? They don't want to give this fight away for free. Last time, the whole entire main roster um, was in the middle of this fracas from everyone from the Ascension, Bo Dallas, you had Ron Killings, R-Truth, um, you had... Uh, uh, a new day, you had uh, Heath Slater, Adam Rose, the Ascension, anyone who was anyone was in the ring trying to break up this fight. Uh, nothing could, could hold back um, Brock Lesnar and Undertaker from getting at each other. You know, Brock yelled, I'm going to kill you. And Taker says, you're going to have to. This is the closest thing that we're going to get to what Undertaker and Brock Lesnar were trying to set up. Uh, I think, I believe in 2010 uh, in UFC when Undertaker went to the... Uh, Brock Lesnar fight in Las Vegas, and um, Ariel Hawani was doing an interview uh, with The Undertaker as Brock Lesnar walked by, and Brock uh, sort of gave uh, a shrug uh, to Undertaker instead of like giving him a respectful look, and Taker was asking Brock if he wanted a fight right there, and since then, that has uh, unraveled uh, to the point where we now know the story that uh, WWE, Undertaker, and Brock Lesnar were trying to set up a fight uh, for WrestleMania 27, which would have been Undertaker against Brock Lesnar. Um, where this streak would have been on the line right there. Honestly, at WrestleMania 27, um, that would have been for 19-0. and 0. Uh, I think that, honestly, if that match would have happened, it would have been Undertaker beating Brock. Um, I believe that was what the whole basis of the match was going to be. But at that point, uh, Brock had lost the fight. Um, he was no longer champion. Um, Dana White had no thoughts of a UFC fighter going and wrestling in WWE. Um, something that hopefully he will be changing his mind about this year with Ronda Rousey appearing at WrestleMania 32, being the, all the rumors um, buzzing around. Um, but uh, Dana, you know, Vince McMahon even went to Dana and basically said that me and you can have a match and you can beat me as a way of trying to calm this out. Uh, you know, I'm not quite sure what they're going to do if Undertaker and Brock Lesnar are going to have some sort of a face-to-face -face promo, if they're actually going to try to have these guys do a contract signing. We all know what happened the last time these guys were in the ring for a contract signing leading up to WrestleMania 31. Undertaker drove a pen through Brock Lesnar's hand as a way of trying to show this guy that he should fear him, uh, that he would do anything at any time. But when the match came down to it, Brock beat Taker at WrestleMania 30, ending the streak. And that's why we're here at uh, you know SummerSlam 2015, trying to find out who the best of the best is. I I'm still torn on who's going to win this SummerSlam match. Honestly, at this time, I really think um, that... Uh, it's going to be uh, Brock getting the win yet once again. I don't know if this is setting up Undertaker's retirement or Undertaker asking for one more match and then wrestling at WrestleMania 32. But um, I'll be selfish and tell you that I really want to see Undertaker go into the Hall of Fame this year. So I'm hoping uh, that this is going to be his last match. But maybe tomorrow they'll, they'll draw that out. That maybe this is a career match or something like that. But as of right now, I'm thinking that no matter what, Taker's fighting somebody at WrestleMania 32.
Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you, counting down the uh, Raw preview for August 17th, 2015. Big rumor of the day is that will John Cena be in attendance at the Monday Night Raw in Minneapolis, Minnesota? I was really thinking that John Cena was going to make appearance last week in uh, Washington. I really thought that, you know, you know, Seth Rollins had issued a challenge and, um, you know, John Cena needed to answer that challenge. Honestly, for me to think that John Cena was man enough to show up on Tough Enough knowing that Seth Rollins was not around and answering the challenge to Chris Jericho and Daniel Bryan. I know it was on live television. It was even on WWE television. To, to me, honestly, that's a little bit of chicken shit shit, you know, based Basically, uh, John Cena stands for never give up, hustle, loyalty, and respect. And when somebody issues you a challenge, John Cena is normally the first guy on the block to say, you know what, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. I mean, look at when John Cena has, has had, you know, cashed in attempts on, on the title. If you go back to when um, Edge um, cashed in on him uh, after he had already fought his way through the elimination chamber, you know, he stood up, he manned up, and he said, all right. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Bring it. And uh, Edge beat Cena in a matter of seconds, taking the title. But, uh, you know, that's what it's all been about. I mean, even if John Cena got ran over by a truck and Seth Rollins asked him for a fight, um, I think that, you know, John Cena is normally man enough to step up to the plate and do it. But uh, for some reason, they, they chose not to have John Cena on the show in Washington last week. He ended up being on the Tuesday night Tough Enough the next night, even though there were so many people from Daniel Bryan, um, Paige, um, and other probably members of the uh, crew. Everybody had to hop on that flight and fly from Washington to Orlando um, to do the uh, show from the uh, WWE Performance Center. I don't know why they didn't do it, but honestly, in my mind, I sort of hold it against them. I think that Rollins and Cena are going to have a great fight. Um, it's not guaranteed that Cena is going to be there. I mean, even if you go to WWE.com and you go to the Raw 5-point preview, will Cena meet Rollins face-to-face -face on Raw? They know. They're not telling us, but basically... This got big when Rollins broke John Cena's nose in the uh, United States Championship title match on Monday Night Raw a few weeks ago. Since then, Cena's got his beak worked on. It seems that he's all ready. He doesn't even really have the black under his eyes. Uh, it seems like you know the, the, the surgery worked for him, and he's going to get back into that ring, and he's going to go in there and do this. I'm still thinking that Cena versus uh, Rollins at the at the championship. I'm sorry, at, the, at SummerSlam when it's title for title and it's champion versus champion. I still think it's not going to be a finish. I, I don't see anybody walking out of there with two belts. I just think that it's going to be a fight. Uh, we're going to be something whether if it's a count out, disqualification, something that leads us to another match where both titles are on the line. I don't know how you do this. I know that it is the United States Championship means a lot because Cena has it, but. It's honestly a lot like Rusev's undefeated streak. Once Rusev loses the undefeated streak, Rusev's really not worth as much as he once was. He's very entertaining. You just don't really think of him as um, big as he had it, you know? So, you know, um, I think that the next match with Rollins and Cena have down the road, I'm guessing that more than likely that's just going to be... Um, a, a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Somehow they'll get the United States title out of there. Um, that's just what I think. So we'll see what goes down. Cena for tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw. I'm going to guess he's there. He better be there. That's my guess. Hey, what up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach counting down until the big Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. This is the five-point free view, getting us until the August 17th edition of Monday Night Raw. Last week, we had a very, very fun ending to Monday Night Raw, basically um, with uh, Randy Orton going one-on-one -on -one against Seth Rollins for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, during that, we had Sheamus coming down uh, after the big RKO, interrupting the match, making it where uh, Randy Orton won the match via disqualification meaning Seth Rollins would keep the championship. At that point, uh, Sheamus gave the big brogue kick, um, you know, taking out uh, Rollins and uh, throwing Randy over the barricade. At that point, basically, Sheamus went into cash-in mode with the referee, and at that point, um, you know, once the referee was about to finally ring the bell uh, and go for the big one, there was Randy Orton appearing out of nowhere, giving the big RKO, ending the championship dreams of Sheamus. Uh, honestly, when I think 
of Sheamus as the money in the bank carrier. I don't really think of him as a guy that's going to be a future champion. Normally, that's always the dream. Anytime any one of these guys get on there, maybe uh, Dean Ambrose. No, I apologize. Not Dean Ambrose. I screwed this guy's name up every time. I used to think of him as one of the main players in WWE, and then the minute that he lost his cash-in attempt, I sort of dropped. I don't know if I lost respect for him or if I just lost credibility in him, but Damian Sandow, to me, honestly, is one of the worst guys to ever have uh, the Money in the Bank briefcase. At the time he had it, before cashing in and losing to John Cena on Monday Night Raw, I really thought this guy was going to be a future World Heavyweight Champion, um, and I thought they were going to really push this guy to the limit since losing um, his Money in the Bank briefcase um, attempt. Um, this guy has you know, been fired from WWE, um, kayfabe Lee, and then gone into a tag team where The Miz hired him, and then uh, worked his way out of this until he really got over. And the second that he left Miz's side, um, you know, just drowned. Uh, from then, he turned into the Macho Man, which is another gimmick that just died out of the middle of nowhere. And um, it's, it's hard. I mean, when I saw him wrestle at a uh, WWE house show recently, he wrestled in the match that I called the Island of Misfit Toys, where it was uh, Heath Slater, Damian Sandow, Curtis Axel, um, Van Dango, um, it was a six man tag and, and it was like everybody that was in there were guys that at one time, it seemed like WWE was really going to push them and they just fell into the middle of nowhere and they had nowhere for them to go. Um, but uh, tomorrow night, so we should see Sheamus, you know, answering uh, to uh, Randy Orton, stopping his cash-in attempt. Uh, I believe that Randy Orton versus Sheamus is the one of the last matches that needs to be named for SummerSlam, and it should be going down tomorrow on Monday Night Raw uh, with um, them having a match. Of course, this will be the rematch. They fought a thousand times, but this is uh, their current feud, which you know they had the match at Battleground where Randy won via. A RKO. Randy won when he when he fought Sheamus at that house show I went to in, in uh, Stockton as well. But uh, we'll see what goes down tomorrow. Uh, Randy versus Sheamus, one way or another, needs to get added to the SummerSlam card. You know this match is going to happen, so something's going to happen. They might even have a match to set this up tomorrow on Monday Night Raw. Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you with the uh, Monday Night Raw preview. Uh, of course, tomorrow is going to be a big one. It's going to be the go-home show uh, to get us to SummerSlam 2015. Everybody knows that this is going to be the you know, the, the, the last time uh, that Undertaker and Brock Lesnar will be looking at each other face-to-face, -face, but also it's the first time uh, that they're going to be seeing each other since their big encountering brawl uh, the night after Battleground 2015. Um, uh, when Undertaker showed up and then Brock came down and it was just on from there. You know, basically they were getting the build uh, to get us to SummerSlam, building up how big the streak was to the Undertaker. And uh, he wants revenge for them taking that. But, uh, you know, honestly, another thing that a lot of people have been looking forward to is the return of Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, you know, was uh, attacked uh, by Rusev. And um, that was sort of a, a part of the whole deal between Rusev and Lana and the split. Lana and Dolph Ziggler immediately uh, kicked their way into a relationship where they post Instagram selfies and make out all the time and uh, probably do the hippity-dippity uh, backstage and a lot of things like that. But. Uh, I know that uh, I was thinking that there was going to be a mixed tag uh, at Battleground, uh, but it turned out that Dolph Ziggler ended up getting a movie role. Um, I, I don't remember the name of the movie, but I do remember it looks like uh, the time on the clock. I don't know what that's about. And Dolph Ziggler showed up at a house show where he did an, uh, an entrance. Uh, not not to the ring like uh, coming down uh, the ramp, but he made an entrance like he was walking to his seat for something. People say that they were filming uh, the entrance uh, pretty much from the ring. Um, so once the movie comes out, it'll probably be that Dolph Ziggler wasn't even at a wrestling show. He might be at a boxing event or some sort of a sporting event or something like that where he just needed to be walking down the aisle of a, uh, a, a stadium or some sort of an event where something was going down. I don't know a lot about the movie other than Ziggler stars in it. And um, it was one of the reasons why I've heard that he re-signed uh, with WWE. It was up in the air uh, that Dolph Ziggler's contract was going to be ending soon. And um, you know, some people said that he was going to re-sign. Some people said that he was going to leave and pursue other interests, such as uh, comedy and movies. And I guess uh, when WWE offered him the WWE films, uh, that was enough for him to put his name on the contract and stay for an extended uh, period of time uh, where WWE would, would back him by putting him into a movie and, and putting dollars behind him uh, trying to make that a success for him. 
But um, before we left, it, it looked like we were building towards a battleground mixed tag where it was going to be um, Lana and uh, Ziggler going up against Rusev and his new uh, chick, which would be uh, Summer Rae. Um, Summer and Lana have been taking pictures backstage, basically wearing the same outfit, you know, basically sort of like who wore it best. Um, you know, and uh, we've seen them exchanging things back and forth where um, Rusev came out and gave her presents. Um, you know, I think he gave her a, a, a cold fish, um, sort of, a, you know, sort of representing what Lana was to him. Um, I was thinking this match was going to happen at Battleground and it was going to be a good one. Of course, Lana, who's never wrestled a match, she came into WWE onto the main roster as sort of just the spokesman uh, for Rusev. But of course, she was signed to WWE, so at one point, WWE had to have faith in her to be a wrestler. and She must have been getting some sort of training. It's not like they're just sticking, sticking her in there, you know, hoping for the best, uh, you know, just... Throw some punches and kicks and maybe pull some hair. You know, we've seen some ECW cat fights um, from Lana and uh, from Summer Rae where they you know, grab each other's hair and roll around. I always thought that Summer Rae um, had some talent as a, uh, a wrestler when she wrestled for NXT and then she did wrestle some matches uh, on Monday Night Raw, but then quickly just sort of just became the manager role where she didn't fit in with the. Uh, the divas that were on there. I, I'm not 100% sure that she has uh, the skills to be in there with the diva revolution that's going down right now, but if she did wrestle a match one-on-one -on -one against another one of the girls, I think I would uh, enjoy it. I've always thought Summer was a, a very entertaining girl, very good-looking girl uh, to have out there, but uh, Ziggler uh, making his return to Monday Night Raw tomorrow on Raw is uh, pretty big news, um, so we'll just take it from there and uh, welcome back Corporate Kane as well. Oh boy. Hey, what up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you with the live continuous coverage of tomorrow's night's big Monday Night Raw. We're talking all the hype up, everything that's going to be going down with Raw tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we talk about the return of Dolph Ziggler, but also scheduled for return is none other than Kane. No word if it's going to be corporate Kane or real Kane making his uh, return to Monday Night Raw. But we've already seen, you know, before Battleground, it was Kane with a broken leg. I'm not sure what they're going to be doing if they're saying that Kane has bionic healing leg powers where he can come back from a broken leg in one week or if they're just going to have him come out like Vince McMahon style uh, or Bret Hart style wheeling around in the wheelchair. I'm not sure really how he fits in uh, to what's going on in WWE as of right now. Uh, maybe he's going to go after Rollins uh, seeing how uh, Rollins um, well, to tell the whole story, what happened before Battleground was that uh, um, basically Seth Rollins was on the run uh, from uh, uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, basically, it was Kane's plan um, to try and attack Brock uh, before Battleground to even up the odds. Um, basically, Brock Lesnar wasn't able to get his hands on uh, Seth Rollins, but he was able to get his hands on Kane, picking up the steel steps, banging him on his legs, um, and they basically they said that he was injured. Uh, Seth Rollins returned to the ring, gave a promo saying how he was going to beat Brock on his own. There was no J&J &J security, there was no corporate Kane, we didn't really even know if Triple H was going to be in his corner, and he was going to be taking on Brock Lesnar one-on-one -on -one at Battleground. It ended up being that Undertaker made his return and um, saved Rollins' championship because Rollins was pretty much dead, buried in the ground right there. Um, but uh, as he made his escape from the leg, uh, I'm sorry, as he made his escape from the ring and headed to the back, he made it, he took it upon himself to add insult to injury, kicking the leg of, um, of uh, Kane laying on the ground, you know, kicking the broken leg that was already broken. And, uh, you know, the story wasn't about Brock Lesnar hitting him with the steel steps. It was more about Rollins turning his back on Kane, something that he had already done before, before having to go one on one with Lesnar and trying to get the band back together and uh, trying to, uh, you know, have some backup heading into there before um, basically Brock beat up. Um, their J, J Securities Cadillac, then beat up J, J Security themselves, and then breaking the leg of Kane. Um, but I hope they don't mess up Taker versus Lesnar um, by bringing Kane back uh, to get revenge on Lesnar instead of putting it on Rollins. I'm guessing that, that you could put, um, you know, put. Kane out there with with Rollins against each other because Cena's not going to be there. He accepted the challenge already at WWE.com. If he could have accepted it in person, he probably would have waited until Monday Night Raw this week uh, for Cena to come out. So I'm guessing that Cena might not even be at Raw tonight. So we'll have to see uh, what goes down. I'm uh, hoping that we get to see corporate Kane and not real Kane because I don't want anything messing up 
Lesnar versus Taker at SummerSlam. I don't want outside interference of uh, Kane, and the, there was one of the rumors that was going around last month that it was going to be real Kane going up against Lesnar sometime soon. So we'll have to see what goes down on Monday Night Raw. Maybe we'll actually get to see Lesnar versus Kane as a match. But Taker's going to be in the house, so Taker's going to want to get his hands on him as well. So we'll see. Peace out, everybody.